Okay, we are here. All right, so we're going over page 77. Um, right, mine are a bit different. Mine says 71. It's because I added more in since last year. Okay, so 77 is all the different terms. Get my little map out here. I can see you do. All right, can I pick on people? Sure. So if you don't make a noise, I'll pick on you. Okay. All right. Okay, so it says abiotic factors, the non living components of the environment. Let's start. How does this work? Oh, yes. Let's start with Turgil. Yeah? Water, salt, sun? Uh, like minerals and nutrients. Okay, so minerals and salts, we can say the same. Nutrients I tend to use for like amino acids and sugars that we get from our food. But minerals and salts, we can use as the same minerals. Is that okay? Anything else? Anybody else? Any others to help? Okay, um, say me. Can you say temperature? Temperature, anybody else? Come on, guys. What else? Yes. Light. Oh, you're done. Sorry. Light. Light. What else? Um, I said air. Air. What's in the air? Oxygen. Oxygen and? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Anything else? Yeah? Rain. rain. Yes. At the back? Uh, bonga. Sorry. Humidity. Humidity. Anything else? Wind. Wind. Good. Any others? What about, let me see what I had extra. What about pH? pH of the ground. Don't different plants like growing in different pH ground soil? So I've got a plant at home. It's called a, it's gone out of my head now. It's an azalea. And I put tea bags, open tea bags in water, and I put that, um, the ground up tea leaves, I, I water the plant with that because it makes the soil more acidic because that's what they like. But most of our garden plants like a neutral soil. What pH is that? Seven. Some of them like a more acidic, some of them like a more alkaline soil. It depends, different plants. All right, let's move on. Uh, biotic fact, uh, factors, Justine. Um, animals, plants, fungi, bacteria, and protein. Okay, so she named the five kingdom, kingdoms. That's very good. Anything else? Did anyone have anything different there? Different wording? Okay, next one is biosphere. Um, Tandor. Where are you, Tando? Oh, you swapped around a bit. Okay. I'll find you. Yes. The hydrosphere. The hydrosphere. The atmosphere. Atmosphere. Lithosphere. Lithosphere, we also call that. Yes. Geosphere, yes. like geography, the ground. So those are the thin regions around the edge of the earth where living organisms are found. Who's ever watched the movie called, I don't even think I have, Abyss, The Abyss? Abyss, where they go deep down with these really tiny, strong submarines down into the very deep water where those funny fish are found with tentacles and big teeth? No. Okay. All right, next one. Community. Um, Sonali, where are you? Okay, you all swap. It's fine. I'll just call your name. Okay, Sonali? Um, I just got down from a pond. Okay, so a biome, remember a biome is a much larger area. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Sorry, Sonali. Biome number four. Um, I said tundra, ocean, desert, um, bathroom, and terrestrial. Okay, anything else? Jungle. Sorry? Jungle. Yeah, like an equatorial forest, hey? like okay. the Amazon, yes. Uh, I said savanna. Savanna, okay, and Bonga. Wetland, good. Sorry? Grassland. Grassland, yes, like what was here before we all came along. Okay, great. Let's see if I had anything different. No, you've all got them. Oh, I had fainbos. Remember, do you know what fainbos is? Yes. The Mediterranean biome, Western Cape, but also around, you know, Mediterranean and in the bottom of Australia. All right, community, oh, very itchy. Okay, community samsara. I also just said pond ground. Uh, okay, so community consists of naturally occurring groups of organisms living in the same area. So the community of a pond. Zani? A forest of trees. A forest of trees. Anything else? Yes? Uh, a garden. A garden, yes. Like your, the bird community in your garden, yes? Uh, does this apply to humans or is this like animals? Yeah, we're applying, we could apply to us, like the Bolu community. So I said neighborhood. Yes, it's the neighborhood.
neighborhood where these animals live. So we're gonna stick to the ecological communities. Anything else? Anyone? Nobody else? Maybe it's part of Kruger. Who's been to Kruger? Skakuza, or wherever. That could be that community around Skakuza. Has anyone been watching Channel 183? I think it's called Wild Earth. The, the Sunrise and Sunset Safaris. If you want to chill and just relax, go and watch Channel 183. Okay. All right, number six, Habitat. Am I clear? Uh, I actually didn't put any Habitat. Okay, think of one off the top of your head. Any animal, where does it live? Where does a frog live? In a lake. Okay, she said lake. Yes, she's right. Anything else? Come down. Hello. Any other habitats? A tree, no? A tree. Who lives in a tree? An owl. An owl. Good. Anything else? Habitats. Do you have pot plants at home outside or rocks and then you move them and there's little things jiggling underneath? What are those things called? Can't remember now. Little wood lice, I think they're called. Under a rock or under a pot plant, if you move it, and now there's ants and wood lice under there, that's their habitat. Anything else? Yes, kiss all. Yes. Okay, anything else? Yes. The ocean for the whale or whatever. Okay, Rizani? Grassland? A grassland. Who would live in the grassland? Okay, and small animals? Sorry? Mice. Mice. Little mice with three stripes. Yes. Okay. Um, let's move on. Population, please. Um, I'm, 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 who have I spoken to? Uh, Emma. Um, I said like zebras. Okay. A popu zebras. But, but you say a group of zebras called a? Called a? Like a collective noun. Oh, okay. This is oh, I'm sure zebras have got their own. That's There's funny. another one. Yeah. A oh, dazzle. Yeah. Okay. But maybe in bio we're going to stick to who? Okay, we're not that bedazzled. Anything else? I want a population. Yes. A pride of lions. It's, um, what's your name again? What's your name again? Yes. And how do you say it again? I always want to say it weird. Ngoko. I'll come and get a listen. I'll come get a listen. That's okay. Right. I was saying Kako, and I told me on Friday, I think, that it's different. My brain hasn't got it yet. It's okay. Yes. Mwako. Do I get it? See there? Buffering. I'm allowed to buffer. You guys buffer when you write your test. I've got to read that. Even, yes? A school of fish. Anything else? A pot of dolphin. A pot of dolphin. Got it. Okay, so collective nouns. Yes. I was going to say an army of ants. An army of ants. Is that any? Stampede of elephants, I think. Huh? Stampede of elephants. Yes. I always thought it was her, but stampede is a nice one. Yes. The English collective noun. Okay, next one. Ecosystem. Different populations of organisms, plants, and animals that live together and interact with each other in the environment. Hang on now. Who studies the ecosystem? The, the ecologist. Okay, give me an example. A forest. Maybe I want to study the forest to see what's happening to the fungus growing on the trees and killing them. What else? Yes, at the back. Um, sorry, it's fungi. Sorry? Maybe I want to see if the temperatures in the desert are getting warmer and the desert is becoming bigger, encroaching on farmland. Yes. A whole ocean, so a marine biologist would study the ocean, or a part of the ocean. Anything else? What about a small ecosystem? Uh, a grassland. What about a grade 10 pupil going down to the field and I say, please look at the ecosystem two by two meters squared. Would you do that? I've done that before, we just can't do it now, where we mark out an area and we say, what's biotic, what's abiotic, and you have to come up with all the interactions. Okay, no problem. All right, I had a field, I had a garden, a pond, under a rock. The ecosystem is as big or as small as you want to study. Okay, now we should go a little bit quicker. Um, Kayla, autotrophs, number nine. I said trees. Trees, anything else? Plants, anything else? You can even have named groups of plants, different types. Is that Algae? Algae, yes, algae. Anything else? Yes. 
longer? Seaweed, algae, yes. Anything else? What about mosses? Hey, anything? Yes? Okay, wheat, crop plants, yes. Okay, heterotrophs, consumers. Um, Kazimna, where are you? She here? Where's Kazimna? Oh, sorry, I thought you knew. Yes? Oh, which one was that? That's number 10, heterotroph. Sorry? Lion. Okay, lion's a heterotroph. What else? Rabbit. Rabbit? A cow. A cow? A beaver. A beaver? I said a zebra. Zebra and? A panda. A panda. What about small things? Birds. Us, humans. Okay, now small things. What heterotrophs are small? Beetles. Beetles. What else? Ants. Ants. What else? Decomposers. What are decomposers? Examples. Bacteria. Bacteria and? Mushrooms, fungi, do they make their own food? Yes, no. no, they're heterotrophs, yes. We do number nine. I'm lost. If we do number nine, fine. Oh, number ten. Number ten. So number nine, plants, algae, and Yes, because they don't make their own food. Okay. All right, number 11, a food chain, the order in which organisms feed on each other. Food chains always begin with a, everybody? Or a, I'm glad you gave the biological term to this, autotroph, yes. Okay, so who's got an interesting one? Not grass in parlor line, that's boring. Oh, that's an interesting one. Who's got one? Oh, sorry, your example. The one that you've written in the last column. Who wrote down one? Who's my pen? Come on, who's got an interesting food chain? Yes? Um, Shh. Okay, I'm going to say plankton because little, little seaweeds, microscopic ones, they're actually called phyto. Little plant pl plankton are eaten by who? Which whale? The, 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 the one with the bristle. The, bra the baleen. Yeah. That's the blue whale, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and then who eats the blue whale? Maybe. Yeah, maybe sharks if it's old and it's died or something. Okay. All right. So that's the food chain. All right. We've actually gone way past here now. I forgot to read this. Okay, so now we're looking at trophic levels number 12. It's the position at which an organism feeds in a food chain. So I've said go and look at the pyramid. And we're going to have, we'll do a kahoot on that as well. Omnivores, organisms which feed on both plants and animals. Um, Tianza. You see, I've got name written here and then other people are there. So I am allowed to get a bit confused, okay? Okay, that's fine. Milady, it is Milady. Yes. I said hedgehog. Sorry? Hedgehog. Hedgehogs are omnivores? Yes. What do they eat that makes them an omnivore? Um, Does anyone know? <laughs> they eat worms and little fruits and things and seeds. Rizani? A raccoon. A raccoon? I don't know what they eat. They eat anything. Anything. Like you guys. Yes? Um, you can always say raccoons. Yeah. Baboons? Yeah, huh? what, what do baboons eat that makes them um, on the walls? Seeds, grass, and... They sometimes eat meat like um, little vervet monkey or insects and worms and, and fruit. Yes? Chipmunks. Chipmunks. Okay, another one? I said humans. Humans, any others? Is it foxes being one for us? Mm, I, I think they're more carnivorous. Yeah? What do maggots eat? Do they eat everything? Maggots eat shh, dead flesh. Maggots are, are fly larvae. They eat dead flesh. Anything else? A dog. Yeah, we've made them omnivores, haven't we? Because yesterday my, um, my youngest was feeding a little bit. We've got a Jack Russell who's a bit. A carrot. He's eating carrots. They're loving it. The other one looked at it. Okay, next one. All right, scavengers. 
animals that feed on the remains of dead or this is easy and we all know these okay who's got yes vulture vulture hyena, hyena. Uh, i think a jackal might be one so they might be yes and sarah i was gonna say hyena, hyena. 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 coyote coyote Anything else? Yes? Beetles. Okay, yes, they scavenge. They go after the dead stuff. Yes. Yeah, they could, because they're also feeding on what something else may be killed. Or raccoons. Okay. I'm not familiar with raccoons, I must say. Yeah. Or maggots or they're more parasites. Maggots are the fly larvae, so egg hatches to form a little worm-like larva which feeds on dead flesh, which metamorphoses into the adult life. So I think it's more flesh and stuff. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Um, two, oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, geez, we need to move on. Number fifteen. Decomposers. They are organisms that break down dead organisms or their waste into what? Minerals or we can even use the word minerals or salts or inorganic salts in the soil. And who uses those? Plants. They absorb the salts. And they make glucose, and now, because they've got salt, shh, uh -uh, they can make proteins and sugars and, well, other sugars, etc. Okay, so decomposers, we know these already. The two examples, wait, two examples, decomposers, the main one, bacteria and fungi. Okay, 16, parasites. Oh, I should have brought my dot in here. I've got a plant parasite. So you get animals that... Um, you get parasites that live on animals and you get parasites that live on plants. And I've got one in my class and I meant to bring it. It's called Dodder. It was growing by the art block. And it's this yellowy plant that grows on other plants. Did anyone see it? It's a pest. Okay, it's a, a very big pest, especially of like lucerne and stuff like that. So there are uh, parasitic plants that live on other plants and they don't photosynthesize and they take all the sugars out the host. All right, what other parasites are there? Quickly. Anybody? Yes? Tapeworm. Tapeworm? Yes? Crab lice. Yes, lice, crab lice, yes? Yeah. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? Did you say lice or crab lice? Huh? Oh, did someone say lice? Mites? Yes. Um, Mites? Threadworms. Sorry? Threadworms. 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 Leeches? Leeches. Nice. Okay. Nice. Sorry? <laughs> right, food webs we're going to look at just now. Shh. Competition. When more than one organism feeds on or uses the same source in an ecosystem, it's all about, there has to be a balance, so everybody has to work together, all right? Um, but animals compete for what? Animals compete for? Territory, food, and water. Territory, food, water, what else? Territory, food, water. For, for being dominant, yeah, the territory, they fight over the territory, what else? Territory, food, water, animals. Lions fighting for? Mates. Mates, females. Okay. Then you get two types of competition. Intra, like introspective, within. So in the same species. So, oh, hang on, we didn't do plants. What do plants complete, compete for? Sunlight. Sunlight. Water. Water. Nutrients. Yeah, nutrients we can call them. Yeah. Minerals or salts. What else? Space, anything else? Okay, I think that's it. Then intraspecific competition within the same species. Come on, quickly, we know this. Yes? Uh, two more birds uh, fighting for one male's mate. Yeah, for a mate. Two males, you know, fluffing their feathers, showing their colors, fighting, um, fighting each other for a female. Yes? Prey. Prey, okay, like lions even. Oh no, yes, intraspecific. They, the, even the males and the cubs and the females are all trying to feed and the males take the food first. Because um, you also said uh, challenging for a leader. Challenging? For a leader. Yes. Okay, challenging for a leader. Anyone else? Uh, can you say, uh, sunflowers, uh, uh, the sun. Yes, sunflowers trying to reach the sun, of course. Okay, inter-specific competition. Inter, like international, like between different countries, so between different species, yes. You can get like a crocodile and a lion both fighting over the poor dead, whatever. That's yeah. Crocodile and lion fighting for some dead carcass near the water's edge. Anything else? Yes? Uh, what animals feed on zebras? Lions, hyenas. Oh, sorry. And they all feed, fighting over the kill. 
Okay, zebras and what else? Zebras and impalas feeding on grass. If you're a grass, if you're a grass eater, you called a. Okay, and what type of herbivore? You feed on grass, so you are a a grazer. Okay, so you know what they do. So there's different levels of grass. So some of them feed lower down, and some of them feed higher up. Then they're not really competing. They feed on different parts. All right. So do we do the, uh, the rhino story here? Because rhinos, there's two types. The one is a grazer and the other one is it feeds on leaves. So it's called a, a browser. Okay? The grazer is the grass-eating one. Which one? The one with a... Sorry, which one? The white has got a wide mouth like your lawnmower. Graze. The, uh, the black rhino has got a... A beaky mouth, a pointy mouth, picks off leaves. Okay, there you learned something. All right. I had your impala and zebra, you know, competing for water. Or well, sometimes you get lions chasing other animals away when the water hole is very small, like during a drought or winter. Anything else? Okay, next one. Biodiversity. So, everything that has ever lived. So, what did you give us examples? Could have written anything here, hey? But what do we call the biodiversity that lived in the past? Those organisms are now? They're not here anymore. Extinct. They're extinct, but we are. So we are still here. We are called, or, or are said to be extant. That's grade 12, hey? We do evolution and all of that. Extinct versus extant. So, how many organisms have become extinct? If 100% of organisms have lived on the planet, how many have become extinct? If 100% has lived, what portion is extinct? Take a guess. Okay, 99. Only 1% is alive today. And most of the, and most of the, or well, some of the ones that have become extinct, how do we know they lived? What fossils. do we look at? If there are fossils. If there are fossils, we can see them. 1% is still alive today. Look at all the biodiversity today. All right, next page. Okay, so we are here now. Right, what is meant by a biome? Anybody? Okay, tell me. A region where specific plants and animals are found. And the region is determined by the temperature and climate, the temperature and rainfall. So it's a specific region, it's got a specific climate. Climate is determined by rainfall. rainfall and temperature. And the climate determines who lives there. Who lives there? Us and plants and animals, etc., etc. All right, what did I say? Uh, wrong page. On the next page. All right, I just said it's a large area with a particular climate, i.e., temperature and rainfall with specific types of plants and animals that live there. Okay, climate, temperature, rainfall, plants and animals. Okay, I'll put this eventually up onto Google Classroom once everyone's gone through it. All right, then I tried to pull up photos, but maybe I should have, I don't know, I thought they were okay. So the top one, number one is a, I think I need more trees to make it look like Kruger, hey, proper savannah. So that is savannah, this is? Grassland number two, number three, a forest. I was trying to find a forest from South Africa, okay? And there, a desert, or maybe a semi-desert. So in each of those, there's going to be different temperatures, night and day, and rainfall, and therefore different plants and animals. So could I give you a question on that, like a whole scenario? Yeah, and then you could compare them. Which one is low? Which one is high temperature, high rainfall, low and rainfall? Could you do that? Yeah. I think you could. And then what type of animals and plants live there? Okay. All right, so number one, uh, three. Explain how biome one, the savannah, differs from biome four, the desert, in terms of biotic and abiotic factors. What does one have more of? Trees. Sorry? Trees. There are more trees. What else? Trees. Okay, what animals? 
Yeah, so, and maybe antelope, there's giraffe, what else? So we've got the biotic, what about abiotic? Okay, fertile soil in a uh, savanna, yes. What about abiotic? Compared to number four. Abiotic, what would the temperature be? In a savanna? Hmm? It won't be as hot as the desert. And rainfall? Warm. Okay, let's call it a savanna though, because I need a better picture. I agree. Okay, there'd be more rainfall than the desert. What type of animal in the desert? Caracal, sorry? Oh, they are, I'm thinking of the green ones. Are, are there also ones in the desert? I wonder. Okay. I'm thinking of the green ones like you see in the towel. Or lizards maybe. Okay, but I agree. Anything else? Reptiles. Okay, Scorpions, good one. Anything else? Okay. Are there snakes in both? Yes. Yeah, the different yes, types, eh? Like the side one, the adder, maybe in the desert. All right, are we happy with that? So, are we happy? So, how do you answer a question like this? It says, how number one differs to number four? Do you write a long, rambling paragraph? No. Or do you write number one has this, da 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 da, abiotic, biotic, and number four has this? Rather bullet things, you know, if, there's, if they ask you to compare, or to give two examples, bullet them. We're really trying to get the grade 10 to 12 to do that. Or if they just have long, rambling answers. All right. Okay, this lesson ends that. We've got 10 minutes. All right, so then I said study the ecosystem. All right, so here we've got an ecosystem. Do I really try and make it bigger? Okay, so here we have an ecosystem, and yes, I know it's easy. Oh, you just jogging our memory. Okay, so name all the biotic components. Okay, just tell me quickly, anybody? Loud. Zebra. Zebra. Elephant. 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 Trees. Hyena. 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 Cheetah. 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 Grass. 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 Termites. 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 Vulture. Vulture. Ants. 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 Okay, great. Decomposing, yes. All the abiotic components. Sun, Sun, Sun soil, soil, uh, soil rocks, rocks, water, water wind, wind, air, air, pH of the soil. Okay. What about dew? Hey? Dew in the morning, maybe. All right. Number three. Describe two ways in which the biotic and abiotic factors interact. Good one. Who's got an interesting one? Abiotic and biotic. Okay. Um, the transfer and replenishment of energy and nutrients. Okay, but how? How's they transfer energy here? Oh, hang on. Na okay, this says abiotic with biotic. So which living organisms are interacting with the abiotic environment? You could get something in it drinking water, but here not really shown. Hey, something drinking water? Science is plant. Used for? <laughs> Uh, sunlight used by plants for photosynthesis. Anything else? What's the zebra using from the air? For cellular respiration. Zebra breathes oxygen for cellular respiration. Okay, I think we got it. Oh, termites. Nice and cool in the, um, in the termite mound. They're using the sand to make sand is abiotic. They're making a nice cool termite mound. Okay, that's one I had. All right. What did I write? I said termites use soil to make nests. Oh, what do the plants use the ground for? Abiotic. Uh, to get the minerals. To get minerals. What else? Trees use the ground for? Water, um, to keep it stable. Water and stability to anchor them. You know, hold, the roots can hold. What else? No lady, anything else? No, no. Anything else? Okay. Let's see what else I have. Yeah, I think we have the rest. Oh, what about using water? What do the organisms use water for? To drink. Hydrate. To hydrate, yes. Whether you're a plant or you're an animal, you've got to be hydrated. Okay, number four. Describe two ways in which the biotic components interact. Biotic. Living with living, yes. Sorry? Elephant eat leaves. 
Elephants eating browsing leaves, yes? Uh, cheetahs eating liver. Cheetah, what is a better word than saying eating? Hunting or being a predator, so they're preying on the zebra. Anything else? Yes? I would say scavengers are eating Leftover kill, like maybe the hyena, or although this guy looks like he wants to, you know, prey on the zebra. Yes? And right behind here, what's written behind here? Oh, there, further down. Decomposes. Decomposes. And we talk about that as well. What else? Anything else? Biotic with biotic? Okay, let's see what I had. Hyena, cheetah, prey on zebra. Elephant eats the bark or the leaves. It's a browser. Zebra, what does it eat? Yeah. Grass, it's eating grass, biotic. Mm -hmm. Controls the grass. Okay, zebra or elephant use the tree for? Shade, maybe. Leaving the tree, but not harming it. Okay, the decomposers, what are they breaking down? So is that biotic, abiotic, or biotic and biotic? Biotic. Yeah. Although it's kind of in the middle, hey? because they're going to break down something that's dead, which was living, now it's not. But it's still protein and what else? Uh, sugars and that that need to be broken down. Can you see it's kind of in the middle? Okay, they decompose and return nutrients back or uh, mineral salts back to the ground. All right, people, are we happy? Okay, so on page number, what is it in your book? It's 81, 82. You're going to do... The um, food webs, can we mark that in the next lesson? We've got about five minutes left. Let me show you something. Um, I think I put it in here. I think I did. I need resources. And then I think next time we can do the cahoots because we haven't quite got there. Okay, this is just for fun. Alright. You know Mr. W. You're gonna have an earworm now. Do you know what an earworm is?
So PE in March sometime last year, 2019, this um, photographer, wildlife photographer was in the water. You know the sardine run? Where the, um, the sardines move from PE all the way up to the towel, Durban. And he was photographing whales and sardines and whatever, and he nearly got swallowed by one. So this is the footage. No one knows about this. Nothing can actually prepare you for the events. I just realized my sound in my lab is so good. It's angry. Oh, here we go. And then it's too easy. Uh, almost 15 years now we conduct the Sardinia and we've always been documenting and filming it. It is a natural event which is the biggest migration in the southern hemisphere in terms of uh, animals gathering along the coast. The day itself was a beautiful sunny day, it was flat seas, the sea conditions were perfect. So that day we launched off the Port Elizabeth Harbour and uh, we travelled about uh, 25 nautical miles from shore. I was trying to get a shot of um, a shark going through the boat ball. And it all happened very fast because it was the first day and uh, you kind of need to tune into the whole scenario. The next moment it got dark and I felt some pressure on my head. And once I felt the pressure, I instantly knew a whale had grabbed me. I could not imagine my head, how he was actually holding me or grabbing me, but I could feel the pressure on my head. There is no time for fear in a situation like that. You, you have to use your instincts. Instantly, I held my breath. His white ball was now going to dive down and release me at some point in time, much deeper in the ocean. Um, this whale has like easily 15 to 20 tons of weight. So if you get bound by a whale, it will flip her over the tail. It can hurt you and maybe also break your ribs. We were all not aware of how the situation would end. And then the next moment, I kind of felt that the whale was turning in the way and that the pressure was released. And then I was washed out of the mouth and uh, was kind of coming back up onto the surface where surely I wasn't looking clever. And natürlich galt dann der erste Moment, wie geht es den Leuten? Ist etwas passiert? Ist jemand verletzt? Und wir waren verdammt froh, dass alles so gut ausgegangen ist. I guess for the whale it was also scary. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, normally they know who's around. They realize that there are persons or dolphins around because they are very sensitive. But as they come up with their mouths open, they can't really see what is just in front of them. And I guess the way thought it was a dolphin. Once I got to the boat, I just looked at Heinz and I said, did you do it? And uh, he said yes, he got it, and then I knew this was a very special event and a special moment. It happened extremely fast. <laughs> From being on the surface and observing something, I became the inside man and suddenly was inside a whale, kind of looking out. It gives me a connection to the whale, which I don't think anyone else has <laughs> So what he says... <laughs> Someone enjoyed it. Okay, so what he says is the whale, the throat is only about this big. So they don't usually swallow such big prey, sardines and small things. But then, the, obviously the whale felt when, you know, oh, cut, something's in my jaw here and spat him out. So he wouldn't have gone down, okay? Okay, so you can go Google that if you